Okay, let's make this dungeon a little more interesting. Right now, it's pretty dull. There's just a few rooms and halls and no nothing to fight, no challenge. So let's add a snail. Maybe right there. There's the snail. You notice you can add just a snail slice if you wanted to. So I have the snail selected in the asset browser and the little sharp part of the red dot here is the way it's pointing. So I haven't selected where to go yet. Um, I'll have it point north. Click. So it's there. Uh, when I hit play again, it will it will be there. Ta-da! And it's already attacking me. Yikes. Okay, run away. Now, this is a chance to show you some of the editor shortcuts. If you have monsters that you are testing but you want to just kill them, hit K. K. Boom, he's dead. So I didn't get any experience or anything. I just got rid of him for testing purposes. Now down here uh, it showed the faint monster icon and then the faint blue icon. So those again are the starting positions and the dark ones are the current positions. If I play again, then it put a, a real one and he's starting to move and I still see the faint ones where everybody started. Some other shortcuts in the editor, but one of them that I can show you now is F1, which says collisions off, and that means physics, so I can walk through the wall. That's kind of a strange thing to do, but sometimes, you know, and I can walk through the snail. Sometimes that's useful just while you're testing things in your map to be able to bypass things and just walk through the walls. Let's set the snail to be in guard mode. So in the AI state here, change it from default to guard. And when I play the map, you'll see it's not moving. He's just sitting there waiting. So if we come back over this way, we can see his tail there. And he doesn't know that we're going to sneak up behind him and start hitting him. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, let's get him. And, uh, you know, we, we ambushed him. So if you want a, a monster to not start wandering around, but to just park his tail in one spot and guard the hallway, just sit him on guard. Now the level here is uh, has to do with how advanced and strong they are. So if you want him to be stronger, raise the level and see how hard he is to beat. Let's pause this. Let's add some more things to our map like an alcove dungeon alcove now you'll notice it has a prison alcove and temple alcove those have to do with the wall sets uh, you could put a, 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 a temple or prison alcove here and with the dungeon wall set it would look a little out of place but um, in certain circumstances maybe that's what you want but we'll just do dungeon alcove and you see it uh, it only places along the walls if you have it on the in the room here it's light gray and you can't place it i'm clicking and it won't work but if i put it on the edge of a real wall now it's there then i hit one to put it back on select and i can select it and activate always has to do with how it behaves we won't worry about that right now but we want to add something to our alcove so let's add a dagger and we have uh, three different kinds of daggers. Now here you can't uh, can't just click on it, but you can hit the down arrow key on your keyboard to select one of these autocomplete options, and then hit enter. Then you you hit add. Now when I was clicking there, I accidentally clicked uh, to add a connector, and it, it came up with this option, so I I just removed that. So. The content so far after I added that new item is a dagger. I could type something else and add something else to the alcohol if it just piled on top or underneath the dagger. So if we if we start over in this map, hit play again, then uh, you can see in the alcove, and I'll make it big, there's a dagger. Ta-da! Let's try adding a scroll something you can read. 
So there's a lot of uh, spell scrolls, for example, the fire shield and fireball. Um, but let's just add an empty scroll here. And we'll put it uh, on the ground over there. Now you'll notice when I'm hovering, it goes to the four sides of the square. So uh, you can put it in any of those spots. And there is, in fact, some uh, advanced options to place it anywhere in the square. It's a script that nudges its location to the very specific spot. But usually one of the four corners is good enough, uh, one of the four sides. So we already put it there. We'll go to the selector and you see there's a spot here for scroll text. If you type it too long then that would be a problem but you can make new lines by uh, doing a backslash n. So let's say this is some sample text then we do backslash n this is the second line all right and you can hit enter here to take the focus off that or you could just click play if i was still typing that i, I could just click play and let's go see what it looks like we'll full screen it oh there's the scroll let's uh see what it says this is some sample text this is the second line so there you go uh, you can read your scroll see what's on there and give the player some hints or clues let's do some more interesting things let's add a door and let's add some ways to open and shut the door so first we're going to make another section and we can see it's not there yet. Play to open that up. All right, let's add a door. There's a lot of different kind of doors. Let's add a dungeon door, portcullis, if that's how you say it. And we'll just put it right there in the middle of that hall. Actually, I think that would probably go better in the front of the hall. Oops, I added a couple more to that same spot. If I go and select, now you'll see it has three of them. So I'll select the third one and hit the delete button, delete. And then go and select the second one, delete. Now there's only the one. Okay, good. So I'll hit S to move it down one. And let's update it. There it is out here in the opening area. All right. Now I can't go in there. I can add a pull chain and update it. And now it'll work. Ta da in this new room. By the way, that new room needs a torch. So I copied and pasted that torch and I'll just put it over there and update it. So you can see it's light down there now. All right, let's take away the pull chain on the door by unselecting the add pull chain. Now it's gone. Now how do you get in the door? Let's add a pressure plate where you step on the plate and that opens the door okay we'll put it right in front of the door so I'm gonna stop that just to clear up the the map here so let's select the pressure plate now since uh, since those things highlight when you're near them if I'm near the bottom of the pressure plate it won't highlight the door it'll just select it but if I was near the top then that's also near the door so when I click, it gives you both. Uh, so that's a clue. If you if you have two things, and you just want to select one real quick, go and hover on the other side of it, so it won't be near both of them. So there, there's a plate. I need to just add a connector to the door. So as soon as I click the add connector, now I can just click on the door, and it fills it in the target. If I wanted to change what that plate connects to, I would hit this little question mark and select something else. I don't really have anything else on the map right now that makes sense to connect to, but I can just select the door again. So with the pressure plate, there's what happens to the plate. That's the event. When the plate activates, that's when you step on it. When it deactivates, that's when you step off. And any, so either activate or deactivate, whichever one. So if it's on activate and we make it open the door, uh, then when we step on the plate, the door will open. We can make it close the door or we can make it toggle the door. So activate and open is really basic and straightforward. Let's do that. Let's go over here 
And as soon as we step on it, it opens the door. Ta-da! And then we can go through. Now that door will stay open forever. Even if we step on the plate again, it just tries to open it again, but it's already open. Now if we have it toggle the door, then we update it. Step on it, it opens the door. Step on it, it closes the door. It only does the toggle when we step onto the plate, not when we step off, because we only have it on the activate event. If we change this to the any event, then it will toggle the door when you step on, and it'll toggle the door when you step off. Let's update it. On, off, on, off, on, off. So it's working just the way we want. Now if you did this, and the door opened, and you walked through, and then it shuts behind you, now you're stuck. <laughs> so you better have some way to open it from the other side, or some other plan with your dungeon layout in order for that to make sense. Okay, so just be careful. Of course, you can always reach something through the bars like that, and that can be a trick that allows you to escape. So there are various options and things to keep in mind when setting up a plate and a toggle or an activate or whatever the settings you want to pick. So you could have it when you step off the plate, it closes it, have the door start open, Okay, and we update that. Then stepping on it seems to do nothing. And then when you step off, it closes it. So it's a, like a trap that you weren't aware of. I'm gonna make that door be closed and have the pressure plate simply open it and just leave it that way for now.